Nothing tells others more about you than the way that you dress. You can deride the statement as a symptom of a superficial world, but that does not change the fact that it is true. Clothes protect us from the elements and they prevent us from being arrested for public indecency. They are also a means of expression, your profession, your aspirations, your background, your self-image. All of this and more are expressed to others by your clothes. Others will, upon first encountering you, take a visual inventory of your appearance and consciously or subconsciously assign certain personality traits and values to you, whether you possess them or not. This will work to your advantage or disadvantage, depending on the way that you dress. Hello ladies, welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and I've been on a little bit of a level up journey this year. And one of the things that I'm finding is you can't level up without money. And so with that, I thought we could focus this month on the habits of old money. I've been sharing all of what I've been learning by reading the old money book. And I hope you are enjoying this series as much as I've been enjoying sharing it with you. So if you are new here, I'd be so honored if you subscribe to this channel. We talk all about leveling up, femininity and modern elegance. So with that, let's talk a bit more about old money. Money. Have you ever heard the saying that first impressions last a lifetime? I feel like old money takes this quite seriously. They really understand that the way that they look, the way that they dress, it's not that that's the most important thing about them, but that is going to add to the narrative. Here are some of the things that we can look at when we're looking at clothing, because clothing really does convey a certain narrative. Clothing can convey your culture. It can convey authority. It can convey sexual prowess. It can convey financial position and status, and it can convey class. If you are new here, you may not know, I took Anna Bay's Secrets of the Elite Woman program. And one of the reasons I love Anna Bay and love that program is I feel like Anna is one of the few people in this space that will speak to the fact that looks do matter. And I think often when people hear that, they think, oh my gosh, that is so superficial. But the minute that you realize that looks do matter and you are being judged off of the way that you look is the minute that you can take kind of the BS out of the situation and understand that you need to show up in a certain manner in order to get you to where you wanna go. Now, is that the only thing that matters? Absolutely not. But I don't think that, I don't think that we should ignore it. And I think that often our emotions get in the way and we think on the inside is what counts. But then when you think about it, if you were to go to a restaurant and you were gonna get a plate of food and they slapped the food on the plate and handed it to you, you wouldn't think of that, that that was quite appetizing. You would not really yearn for it. And you know, if you were buying a house and it was an absolute wreck, you wouldn't be like so excited to go buy that house, you know? And I think people often like to think that when it comes to humans, that we just look at what's on the inside but we know that that's not true. Maybe there's somebody that's walked by you or they're coming to walk by you and they look really disheveled. Maybe they look like they are on drugs or they're, they've been drinking. You get a little bit anxious. Maybe you go into the bank and you see somebody that is at the teller and you just, you're hoping and praying that you don't get that person. It's because you've looked at them and you've assessed and you've judged. The minute that you understand that everybody is judging is a minute that you can take the personal offense out of it and craft a narrative that you want or get closer to crafting a narrative that you want. So if we want to understand old money, we must understand why they dress a certain way and understand what it is that they're assessing when they pick these items. So tip number one, this is the thing that I've noticed with old money. They always dress for the occasion and what is appropriate for the occasion. So I feel like when you go on Instagram or you go on TikTok and you see old money aesthetics, you can often see like tennis outfits or golfing outfits. And the thing is, I don't think that old money just walks around wearing tennis outfits or golfing outfits, but I think that they dress for the occasion. Whereas I think there's a lot of people who maybe they go golfing, but they don't have the resources to wear a golfing outfit. And then you see them in kind of their normal clothing. And I think that's why we've started to assess or think 
that old money is just walking around in tennis outfits and golf outfits and of the sort when really it's actually that they dress appropriately for the occasion that they're at. So tip number two, the way that old money dresses is they dress timeless and classic as opposed to fashionable and trendy. This is so they always look good because if you're wearing something that is too trendy, it won't seem classic and it will easily look dated. Tip number three, Old money wears what is comfortable. Again, you don't typically see old money people walking around in outfits that look like they have to be taped on or bandaged on. They wear what is comfortable. And I think that's often when we see, you know, they might have a sweater wrapped around or they're in kind of loafers that are a little bit comfortable, but they're still fashionable. Clothing is generally not worn to call attention to oneself. Discretion is paramount. Fashion is to be avoided like the plague. Classic styles in natural fabrics form a roster of reliable, top quality garments that constitute the majority of the old money wardrobe. Value, comfort, and quality are watchwords here. Old money dresses low key, but the thing is is that that doesn't mean that they don't dress well. There is a difference between dressing well and dressing trendy and fashionably. I think this is the area that has really piqued my interest when it came to old money circles is that I was realizing that it was a lot more of a sustainable way to shop and dress and kind of adorn yourself. I'm not necessarily someone that is old money or comes from old money, but I realized that when you dress in a timeless way, you can keep those clothes for a lot longer, especially if you've bought something that's high quality. And essentially, it all just started to make sense. It was sustainable from an environmental factor, but then it was also sustainable from a monetary factor. This may be why if you head over to Instagram, you will see that I deleted almost all of my entire Instagram following. I had about 53,000 when I first moved over to the UK and I recently deleted almost all of my followers because over the last few years of me working as a fashion blogger, I really realized that it wasn't sustainable to stay on the track that I was on and equally it was not something that I wanted to promote out to the world. So what do I mean by that? When you're a fashion blogger and you are posting a lot of new fashion trends or new pieces that are in store, you're constantly promoting and pushing out something. and Obviously, stores don't make the most money if they're making the same style over and over and over again. They are picking up what is trendy, what is currently fashionable, and it didn't sit well with me equally. It's a lot of money to be putting out in your business, and yes, you do get a lot of PR, but then how are you telling your audience to go buy the next thing over and over and over again when that's not the way that you are living your life and that's not the way you would be living your life if you weren't getting these products sent to you. Does that make sense? So I was really starting to feel quite convicted by it. Old Money, on the other hand, buys quality clothes, traditionally styled and wears them for decades. Old Money dresses. Everybody else dresses up or barely gets dressed up at all. Old money always looks presentable. Shirts, blouses, skirts, and pants are pressed. Well-made and well-cared-for shoes are worn. Hair is combed and clean. A certain benchmark is met, even in the most casual of settings. If you dress like old money, no one will really notice how you dress. No one will know how much money you have or don't have. They will only assume that you have taste and discretion. Not bad things to be known for. Anyways, my friends, that is it for this video. I hope you've been enjoying learning all about the habits of old money and maybe you're picking up some of their values too. If you like this video and you've made it to the end, I'd be so honored if you press that like button so I know that this is the type of content that you're enjoying. And I hope you've subscribed as well. Here's to seeing you in the next one. Bye.